welcome to worship for Monday Thursday. It's called Monday Thursday. Um, that Monday is short for the Latin word mandatum, which means commandment, where we talk about Jesus' commandment to love each other. It comes directly from the Gospel of John. And Jesus tells his disciples not only to love each other, but by this, the whole world will know that you are my disciples. In that vein, I want to remind you that if you have any concerns or any needs during these days and these times, do not hesitate to reach out to me. We are your church family. We love you. Anything we can do for you um, during these days that you have any need. And if you need to just chat with me, um, there are so many ways to do that. You can email me. Uh, we can talk by Zoom. We can talk by Skype. I can FaceTime. So many different ways, even if we can't meet in person. Um, I just want you to know that we, that I, and we, your congregation, your church family, love you, and we are here for you. Um, so do not hesitate to reach out. In that vein, we do have people making masks, um, because that seems to be something that may help in these days and times. If you don't have a mask and you would like one, um, I'm even picking up more later today and uh, would love to be able to get those to you. We just need to know how many you need. So. You can reach out to me through our website somehow. Uh, my email, uh, pastor at celebrationlutheran.com, um, and let me know that you need those. And I know many of you are stuck at home, but we will get those to you. Um, I will hand deliver those to you if that's what it takes. So uh, please just let us know if you need that. Also, a big thank you um, for making this service happen to Sean Pody for recording the music, for Karen for making the slides that go along with this service, for Daniel um, Chioko um, for editing all of this video stuff together. They make this possible for us to still be together in this way. So a thank you to our staff and the extra work um, that they are putting in in these strange and different times, but they make this possible. So I wanted to say thank you to them. Let us worship. We are gathered to recall the night when Jesus was betrayed. Are you ready to come to the feet of Jesus, whose life is poured out for you? By the grace of God, we are. Will you stay awake and watch while Jesus prays in the garden? By the grace of God, we can. Will you follow Jesus even into the night of betrayal? By the grace of God, we will. The Spirit calls us together in worship even as the dark road lies ahead. Amen. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your hope for the hopeless and all those who've strayed come sit at the table come taste the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure so lay down your burden Oh, 
up your face Oh wanderer come home You're not too far So lay down your hurt Lay down your heart and Come as you be still earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken up your face Oh wanderer come home You're not too far So lay down your hurt Lay down your heart And come as you God's love for the world is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who on this night with his disciples gave them and us a new commandment, love each other just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know you are my disciples when you love each other. We have not always loved God or each other, and so we confess. Most merciful God, We are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me as we pray together the prayer of the day. Holy Jesus, even between betrayal and denial, you promise the gift of eternal life with you. Transform us with your holy presence. Cleanse us, forgive us, and renew us in your word. Amen. Go to dark Gethsemane All who feel the tempter's power Your Redeemer's conflict see Watch with Him one bitter hour Turn not from His griefs away Learn from Jesus Christ to pray Follow to the judgment hall View the Lord of life arraigned Oh, the wormwood and the gall Oh, the pangs his soul sustained Shun not suffering, shame, or loss Learn from him to bear the cross Calvary's mournful mountain climb there adoring at his feet mark the miracle of time God 
God's own sacrifice complete It is finished Hear Him cry Learn from Jesus Christ to die Early hasten to the tomb Where they laid his breathless clay All his solitude and gloom Who has taken him away Christ is risen, he meets our eyes Savior, teach us so to rise Our Gospel reading comes from the 14th chapter of Mark, beginning at the 22nd verse. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. I assure you that I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way in God's kingdom. After singing songs of praise, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, You will all falter in your faithfulness to me. It is written, I will hit the shepherd and the sheep will go off in all directions. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if everyone else stumbles, I won't. But Jesus said to him, I assure you that on this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter insisted, If I must die alongside you, I won't deny you. And they all said the same thing. Jesus and his disciples came to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to them, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. He began to feel despair and was anxious. He said to them, I'm very sad. It's as if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert. Then he went a short distance farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that, if possible, he might be spared the time of suffering. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible Take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you stay alert for one hour? Stay alert and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. Again, He left them and prayed, repeating the same words, and again, when he came back, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know how to respond to him. He came a third time and said to them, Will you sleep and rest all night? That's enough. The time has come for the human one to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. Look, here comes my betrayer. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The cups, the crown, and the cross. That's what we're going to look at tonight for Monday, Thursday, and tomorrow night for Good Friday. It's a two-part series, and tonight we're going to focus on the cups. The cup that Jesus shared at the Last Supper, the cup that he talks about in the Garden of Gethsemane. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be encountered, your forgiveness experienced, and that your cup of love and the promise of your love would fill each and every one of us. Amen. Famous ad campaign for a credit card asked the question, what's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? I want to ask a little bit different question tonight. Instead of what's in your wallet, what's in your cup? No, really, in the cup next to you, while you participate in this service from home, what's in the cup? Water? Wine? Juice? Soda? What's in your cup? But that's 
not what I really mean. What I really want to know is what is in your metaphorical cup. If I asked you what's in your cup, what are you thinking about? What are you feeling right now? What are the emotions that are just speaking to your soul? I would guess that we all have something similar in our community right now. If I asked, what's in our community cup? What's in our cup as a congregation? What's in our cup as a community here in Middle Tennessee, in Mount Juliet, in Lebanon, in Wilson County? What's in our cup? And I think it's the same for a lot of us right now, that if we're honest about what's in our cup, it's anxiety, but it's hope. In our cup, we find fear and we find love. And the cup, what's in our cup right now, that metaphorical cup, we find grief and we find joy. It's a mixed cup. Jesus speaks, yes, with a physical cup at the Last Supper, right? The Holy Grail, the physical cup that Jesus uses at the Last Supper, but it's so much deeper than that. And then he speaks metaphorically about the cup that he drinks in the Garden of Gethsemane. And if we're going to talk about those cups, we have to understand a little bit about the Gospel of Mark and how Mark tells a story. And when Mark tells a story, it is boom, 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 one scene immediately after the other. But if you look at them only in little pieces, you miss the beauty and the storyteller that Mark is. And we've talked here at Celebration about like a Mark and sandwich that Mark mixes these texts together and sometimes tells a story in between. And it's almost like the Last Supper is one of these in-between stories. I know. It's a standalone story, but in the in-between, because right before the verses we read tonight, we started at Mark chapter 14, verse 22. But just before that, in chapter 14, Judas agrees to betray Jesus. And Jesus even says he knows that Judas is going to betray him. And immediately with this and after this, he predicts that Peter will deny him. And he tells the disciples that they will all abandon him. What kind of friendship is that? That he can't count on them. And when they go to the garden, when he needs them, when he is feeling the weight of what is to come and what he's about to go through, and he wants his friends there for moral support, they fall asleep. They fall asleep on the job. They fall asleep. They fail at even being a friend. And so when we look at it that way and we see the cup that Jesus has right there in Mark 14, 23, Mark tells us he took a cup, gave thanks and gave it to them and they all drank from it. He shares with them and he says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He shares God's love. He shares his love with them. But you understand he does that in the light of knowing he will be betrayed, of knowing he will be denied, of knowing he will be abandoned, of you got to get the feeling of knowing the disciples will fall asleep on the job. Wow. But here's the beauty in that, because with that cup, we get the promise of God's love. Even when we let God down. God's love is unconditional, and that's the promise that's in this cup. Now, I know we usually have communion with Monday, Thursday, and we can't tonight because of social distancing, but the promise is still there. The promise is there for you and for me. And so when Jesus takes that cup, yes, it's a physical cup, but it represents something even so much deeper. It is the promise of God's love poured out and shared and given for you. And for me, and for those first disciples, even though they weren't good enough, even though they didn't measure up, even though they couldn't even be a good friend, God's love still stood for them. 
It's what Paul writes to the church in Rome. Nothing can separate us from God's love because God's love isn't dependent on us being good enough. God's love is for each and every one of us. And sometimes, right now, when I look inside my cup, I just need to know that God loves me. And maybe you do too. Maybe you just need that reminder. You've heard it since second grade Sunday school for many of you that God loves you in this moment and nothing can change that. And that's the beauty of this night. It's called Monday Thursday, though, because Monday is the word for commandment. Because when we look at the Gospel of John, Jesus commands his disciples to love each other. It is a cup of love that is shared this evening. And Jesus speaks over and over. This is one of the most important things God wants us to get is love. Love for God, love for neighbor, right? Which commandment is the most important? Love for God, love for neighbor. Love each other, as Jesus would tell us in the Gospel of John. Love your enemies. Matthew 5 and Luke 6 and 2, different stories. So Jesus seems to have said this on multiple occasions. Love your enemy. The difficulty in loving, though, is it makes us vulnerable. It opens us up to be betrayed. It opens us up to be denied. It opens us up to be abandoned. Like middle school hallways when all of a sudden your friend is popular and you're not and they don't recognize you in the hallway or even acknowledge you exist. But Jesus says God's love for you is there even then, every time, everywhere, and every place. And that's the promise of this night. And then there's the cup in the Garden of Gethsemane. The cup that when we hear Jesus speak about it, take this cup from me, we feel Jesus suffering. And so it is a cup filled with suffering, but that's because that's what love does. Love suffers for others. And Jesus says, if it is God's will, says, Father, if it is your will, I will drink this cup. Because God is love. And love is always an action and always put into action. It's more than just a recurring theme in the Bible. It is who God is. Love based on actions. Love based on values. Love God. Love neighbor. Love each other as a hallmark of discipleship. This is how the whole world will know you are my disciples. Love your enemies. So tonight I invite you to fill that cup and fill the promise and drink in God's love, understanding that God loves you. But I can't leave well enough alone. You know me. I can't leave it there, and you can't either. Because when you receive that kind of love, you hear the command again from God. Love your neighbor. Love each other. Love your enemies. It's a challenge. And it's a choice. We can choose to love. And we are commanded by Christ. The challenge that Jesus lays down, and that's the commandment for Monday, Thursday, is to love like Jesus loved, to live like Jesus lived, to love knowing that it's going to hurt sometimes, to love because that is who God is, and as the people of God, that is who we are. It's the cup of love. It's the cup that will drive Jesus to wear the crown of thorns, the crown of suffering, and that will drive Jesus to the cross. The ultimate symbol, the ultimate sacrifice, the vision in its fullest for you and for me of God's love. Know that God loves you. That's the invitation. Now love others. That's the challenge. Amen.
There's a table you prepared for me in the presence of my enemy. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. And I believe you have overcome. And I will lift my song of praise for all you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how. In the valley. Know that you're with me And surely your goodness And your mercy follow me So my weapons Of praise and thanksgiving Yeah, this is how I fight my battle And I believe You have overcome And I will lift my song of praise for all you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how How I fight It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. The time is now to go into the world and face the darkness. The moment is right to face the powers of the world with the love of heaven. The place is here to endure the suffering love calls us to. The path is before us to side with truth in a deafened world. The hour is come to conspire with Christ and move against injustice. The gospel is this, love is betrayed, but death shall not have the final word. Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.